now. Um, okay, so this is March 13th, 533, the Elected Officials Compensation Advisory Board meeting being held remotely. And I think we only have one more before we have to meet in person, which is kind of special. Um, all right, so Sam, do you want to lead us through a roll call, please? I can do that, John. Thanks. Uh, Felicia here. Uh, Sam Hopper is here and Peter here. All right. We have a quorum. That was hard. <laughs> uh, John, do you know where we're going to be meeting when we do meet? Uh, I, I assume it's at City Hall um, and I don't know where. So that's a really good question. So um, let me get a confirmation on that. All right. And yeah, I'll ask um, I'll ask City Hall about that. All right, so um, why don't we do a little reverse? We'll do the approval of the minutes from the previous meeting, and then we'll ask for any public comment. But I think we know the answer to that. All right, so um, I move we accept the minutes as written. Okay, and is. Uh, do we need to vote? Oh, it's the consent agenda, which we don't need to vote on, right? All right. Do I have a second on the? I think we do have to, but we have to like roll call everything, right? Yeah, we do. Yeah. All right. Do you have your second, Sam, for that, for roll calling the minutes from the last meeting? I can second it. Is that weird? Because I wrote them. Yeah, it wasn't Felicia second. Yeah. Okay. I second it. All right. Excellent. Okay. Felicia. Thanks for stepping up, Felicia. I really appreciate that. <laughs> that was That was great. All right, roll call us, please. Uh, John. I approve. Uh, Felicia. Yes. Sam votes yes, and Peter. Yes. All right, they're approved, thank you. Bet. All right, next up is um, any public comment? It doesn't, there's nobody here, so I'm gonna assume there is not any public comment. All right. I feel fair. Don't you feel unpopular? I mean, not a single show. Do you, you know, Peter, I'm not complaining. Okay. <laughs> Nor am I. I right just now, just kind of keep things streamlined. So that's good. Um, if people come on, that's great. But otherwise, we can keep it streamlined. All right. So um, any assignment updates? I do, Felicia, want to especially get into the survey and make sure you have some questions. I know around getting an email list and all that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, any other updates before we get on to the survey? I nope. I have more of a question. Mm -hmm. It was an out and like it's I think difficult without Javier here, but I don't know if we ever came up with the benchmarking communities. I just I flagged that in my notes as an outstanding thing that we talked about, but then mm -hmm. never came up with. But we didn't perhaps confirm I should just follow up with Javier unless he said anything to you, John. Yeah, why don't you follow up with Javier on that? And then okay. what I would recommend if others agree is that you propose what those communities would be. Yeah. Uh, didn't we come up with a number? I think we reduced We it. did, yeah. And I, I was tasked with like following up with Javier and we did it to a point, but then, yeah, I will follow up. All right, great. Um. Felicia, on the survey, you had questions about email lists and all of that. Yeah, so basically I was just wondering how that process would work. I was thinking about it from an HR standpoint, and obviously I'm very capable of emailing the city's HR and, and asking for a list, but at the same time, I was kind of thinking like, who am I to ask for a list of all of this information? Um, so I just wasn't sure if there was like a certain procedure that we had to follow to request that information so that we could obviously get it and then import it into the survey and get it sent out. Yeah, that makes sense. My guess is that that's public, right? I mean, everyone who serves in the city has some kind of um, government email is, is my understanding. Um, that's not going to necessarily speak to people who 
served and are no longer serving. So I, I we don't know how up to date that list is. But I'll tell you what, I've got to get in touch with City Hall anyhow about where we're going to meet in person. So I will I will also ask tomorrow for an email list. Okay. And then um, just kind of on that same note, I guess I just wanted to make sure that we were going to go with a Qualtrics survey and not the Google Docs one. I think the Qualtrics survey, assuming that Javier is correct and there's no like weird, you know, things that come up because it's a free version. Um, I think the Qualtrics one will be very easy just because you can import an Excel file with all of the participants data in it, you know, their names and their emails. And it just goes that way where I'm not sure if Google Docs has that same functionality or ease of functionality anyways. Okay. My understanding was that we were going to use that survey. Do other people have the same recollection? Okay, I just wanted to make sure since for a while, for a little bit, we were going back and forth between both. Yeah, okay. Um, nope, I think we have that. So um, what else do you need, Felicia, to take send out the survey then? Um, I don't think I need anything else. I mean, I think we kind of went through, I, I don't think there was anything that was left untalked about at our last meeting. Um, so I, I mean, I can, if we want to send it out for just one more final overview of the committee, but I mean, I think at this point we should kind of just let it go unless you feel otherwise. I have no qualm with sending it out at this point. I think we've, we've gone through it a couple of times. Um, Peter, do you remember anything in particular, or I see Sam nodding. I think. No, I know that we went through it with a fine tooth comb. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, I haven't seen sort of the final version with all the edits. I mean, I think the edits are all very thoughtful, but I, I, I and it's, if it's available, I could take a peek if you want, but I'm guessing it's fine. If that's the way people, way people are leaning, I am not gonna stand in your way. <clears throat> okay. Um, and then just the last thing is I was going to create an, a Gmail account, just like a, I was gonna do like an EOCAB <laughs> Gmail account, that way the responses go to that. So that way all the members have access to it. And then of course I can share that email and password with you all once I set it up. That sounds perfect, Felicia, why don't you do that? And knowing it's that great. it's gonna probably take a couple of days to get the email list to Peter's point, maybe once you set up the survey, why don't you send it out to the committee so that okay. you know. When I do that, then I will also send out the, the shared Gmail account information for everybody to have. That sounds perfect. Okay, that sounds perfect. Thank you. Anything else on the survey? Um, so the other, the other piece I sent out was a potential schedule to see us through the end of the year. You know, we had originally intended to hope <laughs> to be done by now, but um, things take a little longer and stuff gets in the way. We do need, absolutely, my understanding is we need to be done um, by, you know, June. So this new schedule takes us through the middle of May, it builds in a little more of a buffer, but I think we really got to make sure we get it done. I, I think also for me, I would really prefer to get it done by then, um, just, you um, just time-wise with other things in my life. So I'm assuming other people feel the same way. Hey, how are you? Hi, you guys. How are you? Good. Are you calling direct from the Florence basement? Um, just taking my coat off and my scarf. Coming in hot into the basement. Didn't even say hi to my family. Came in through the back door, you know. You should go up and give everyone a hug and a kiss and then come back down. No. No. That's, that's, that's why they have bulkheads, right? You can just sneak down and steps <laughs> yeah. from outside. Exactly. exactly. The, the, the side door is for sneaking in, you know? Okay. All right. So the other thing we wanted to get into is I did send out the, the this draft schedule, which is just really just some ideas. And I really want to go over it as a, as a team. I think it's pretty important to do that. Um, where are, I'm going to share this. And hold on. Yeah, share it, please. All right, can you all see this? Yes. Can you all see it clearly? Could you make it a little bigger? Yeah, that's what I'm, hold on. Come on, little thing, you can do it. Because I'm, I'm just on an iPad. <clears throat> yeah, okay. give me just a second. 
that good, Peter? You need it larger. Yeah, no, that's that's great. Thank you very much. All right. So um, again, I I mapped this out, but I really want to make sure we all walk through this and see if it makes sense or doesn't, knowing that things are taking a little longer than we had previously thought. Um, and also knowing that, again, we I think we need to have this done by June because it needs to go to the board by July. My one question on this is, I believe before it even goes to the board, it has to be officially submitted uh, to the city. So I'm, I'm a little, I'm not exact. The other question I have for the city is I want to talk to them about what has to happen at the end of the process um, in specific. John, when you're talking to the city about the other things, like where we're meeting and um, what else, what I forgot the other thing, um, but I, I, it's something in the back of my head so that we had to get it to them. I don't know why I think 45 days in advance of the meeting or something. They do. They, there does need to be a, a significant time in between mm -hmm. when we're, our work is all done and they vote on it. Otherwise, the window closes. <clears throat> does anyone else remember? Sam, do you remember that? I do. I'm just pulling up the minutes so I don't misspeak. The suggestion <laughs> from attorney Seawald, or Solicitor Seawald was mm -hmm. to get it to the city council 90 days in advance, which would leave them 90 days to do their process before the June 30 deadline. Actually, I'm sorry. City council has to act by July 3rd. So in order for them to have 90 days, they want us they want to us to give it to them with 90 days before the July 3rd deadline. Sorry. That, that, that gives us two and a half weeks. Yeah, I was gonna say that gives us till April. Maybe, maybe three. Uh, wow. Uh, 90 days, huh? Holy, I just don't know how that's gonna happen. As much as part of me would love to have that happen. Um, I just don't see, especially with a survey, by the time we get the survey out, we get the survey back. And then we invite people to speak to the committee. I mean, I feel like the 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 calendar I put together is is about as tight as it could get. I mean, we might be able to shave off a week or two, but I can't imagine making it any faster. Do you want me to contact Alan Seawald and see if that's a hard, a hard if that's a, a recommendation or if it's a hard deadline? Yes, please do that. Sam, was there anything else? in the notes or I I just I have it written down that it was a suggestion but I think it's good to confirm okay yeah, that's that, that that's that's really terrible news <laughs> or even follow up with um council president Nash oh I could ask Jim about that you know what if you check with Peter you're going to check with Seawall I'll check with Nash you want me to text him yeah I was going to do it but if you want to text oh, him right now yeah, go ahead do you want, I can text him right now if you want all right, why don't you text Jim and P and Peter, you can get in touch with- I'll Seawall. call Alan after the meeting. All right, that sounds perfect. So let's look at the schedule nonetheless, because I, I, I to be honest, I'm not sure we could shave. We certainly aren't gonna get it done in two and a half weeks. Um, so what I was imagining or what I propose, and, and again, um, this is totally open for discussion with our group, is um, we have the meeting today, which is, March 13th. I saw the survey going out this week, but even that I'm a little concerned about that may not happen if we need the email list. Uh, it depends on how quickly we get it. I'll put in the request with Pam, my contact over there, but um, that might happen this week. We don't know, but let's let's assume it does. It goes out this week. And then um, I gave two weeks. Uh, let's see. Oh, the survey closes. I gave two weeks. Do you think Two weeks is too much for the survey? I think that it probably is an appropriate amount of time, but it's one of those things where, you know, if you give them two weeks, they'll wait a week and a half. So I think some people might do just as well with a week's or 10 days notice. Um, just I, also, I also feel like when, when people get it, they're either going to do it or they're not going to do it. Like they're either going to do it within like a day or two or they're not going to do it. Okay. That's a good. So, Felicia, is there also, um, I think we talked about this, but have we built in a reminder? Um, I feel like there was a way to build in a reminder with through Qualtrics, but um, there's definitely like a lot more to the platform that I am going to learn as I as I import all the contacts. So okay. um, I'm sure that there's something that we can do to serve as a reminder, even if it's just an email again saying. Right. Hey, there's this survey. Please complete it. 
Okay. Okay. So sounds... Jim Nash just got back to me and said, talk to Alan Seawald or Alan Wolf. Do you want me to text Alan Wolf? Yeah. Yeah, it sounds good. I think I paid for his last coffee. So just remind him of that. He says he's in a meeting and can talk after six. Boy, they're responding very promptly, aren't they? <clears throat> um, I find it alarming. I have their cell phone numbers on my phone, but I do. <laughs> well, looks. I think they all owe your bank something. So I imagine they're probably pretty responsive. All right. So then, um, so the survey hopefully goes out this week. And then um, if we close it on the 31st, but it, it, do we close it sooner? I don't know. I still think usually two weeks for a survey is good, but if we need to tighten this up, that would be a place we could shave off a week. I think we should. Uh, I'm sorry, what's that? I think we should. But shave off again, a week? I'm, I'm one person. <clears throat> what do other people think? Shave off the week. <laughs> I also think we need to make sure that we're able to get the survey out this week before we can shave off a week. <laughs> Because what yeah. if we don't get it out till next week, then that that will not be good. Well, that would not be good. Um, we would lose. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, a week, the week after we release it, not not a week from now. <clears throat> OK, we'll do that, Peter. I agree. We'll shave off a week, do what we make sure we do what we can to get it out this week so we don't lose the week that we bought back. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but then. Um, so then the, the next meeting um, after, you know, now is, is yes, Sam. I, I just wonder if it's, you know, like I know my inbox is a mess, both my work and my personal. And so is there objection to like getting a preliminary report of who responded in one week, but leaving it open to see if anything else comes in? I just worry if people, I mean, especially for asking elected officials who we've talked about have a lot of responsibilities outside of their position that, um, you know, it, it's not a long survey, but if you're going through hundreds of emails, <laughs> um, like I presume many are, to mm -hmm. just provide a little bit of an opening and see if we can keep it. I know we're running against a tight timeline, but I just hate to cut people out because we rush them. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So how does that how do you see that impacting a schedule? I mean, I think it's going to be dependent on how many people respond, right? Like if if there's only two people that respond in a week, I, I, do we want to set a threshold of if we get X amount of people who reply? we'll close it versus keep it open another week. I'm just, you know, it's hard to know without knowing how many people this would go out to to understand what would be statistically significant. Right. So you, are, you, are you suggesting that we say a week, but knowing that we might towards the end of that week, if we don't get much response, say we're extending the deadline? Yeah. Rather, that, rather than saying two weeks because- Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that might be the better way. <clears throat> All and right. Felicia was, Felicia was going to send a reminder anyway. So mm -hmm. yeah, I was going to say it also serves as a good reminder to people if they're like if they forgot to do it or chose not to do it, then it's like oh, I still have another week. Maybe I'll do it so, then. They have another opportunity to feel guilty. <laughs> <laughs> and do we like do we want to? And by we, I can figure this out. I'm married to a statistician. Of find like once we understand who would be on this email list of both current and former decide what would be a representative amount of responses yeah we may i i think that's a good thing to take a look at although we also have to be aware of the fact that we may not get a statistically significant number of responses my gut is we may not we're just we're not talking about that many people you know agreed but it which i i would think that in reporting it would be important to include right sure if it's, yes you're, yeah I agree. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm trying to open up a calendar for 2023 just so I can use it as a referral. Are we going to send a reminder to people who got the survey to do the survey before a week? Yes, Felicia has already. She's all over that. 
Thanks, Felicia. I'm gonna um, learn so much about Qualtrics. You can put it on your LinkedIn profile. <laughs> expert. <laughs> yeah, expert. So we have our meeting today. Um, our next board meeting, you know, considering all that, I didn't see us having one until April 1st. Is that when the, uh, April 3rd rather. Um, you know, that's a little ways off. It's three weeks off. Um, the only reason I put it off that long was because I wasn't sure there was much to talk about before we got the survey. If we can move the survey up a week, then I would probably take that April. Oh, I know the other reason too with this is I did get your feedback in terms of what days people are available. And I chose the Mondays that had the most respondents. So I think that last week in March was not a good Monday for um, for people, just, just to you, n let you know why I chose the Mondays that I did. Um, I, so I don't know a way to tighten that up unless um, people, unless A, we shorten the survey by a week and we get the results back faster and then we um, can report back to the committee earlier. But other than that, I, I, I'm not sure we'd need another meeting. What do other people think about that? I'm uh, <clears throat> I'm on a business trip in Louisville, Kentucky that from like the 26th through the 29th. <laughs> Okay, so it may be that April 3rd is just the next meeting and th the goal would be before April 3rd is to make sure that the survey is done. Um, yeah, and then I on, on the, the agenda for, for that, I had sign off of, and I think that's just a copy of <laughs> a previous cell. There's, there's not some hidden agenda in there at all. It's just a end typo. Um, and then the, then the next uh, Monday, though, would be the city employees would present. We would invite them and then they would present. Now, one of the things we could also do to tighten this up <clears throat> would be to have the city employees present on the third, you know, to have a report out of the survey and have the employees present. That could certainly help tighten up, um, speed this up a little bit. I think that could be a good idea, especially if we're all having if we're all on the email that the survey numbers are going to, then there's not really going to necessarily there's definitely going to be conversation to be had, but there's not going to be like a reporting out of what was what happened with the survey because we'll all have access to that kind of general data where we're going to be able to see the results of the survey and kind of, you know, open to everybody. Hopefully, hopefully okay. <laughs> that's the way that works. Um, all right, so what we'll do then is why don't we, we'll move the city employees present to April 3rd, which means that April 10th, it's possible on April 10th, we could report out on the employee's presentation and have an outline of the presentation draft. I mean, it would be really, rough at that point. Although there's there's some pieces that I think are somewhat boilerplate from last time. The other key piece to this, Sam, that you were talking about is we really need to get the, figure out, nail down those cities um, that we're gonna compare ourselves to and make sure we have as much data as we can. Cause that data also seemed a little spotty to me. Um, okay. Um, so, it's possible again, by tightening up the presentations, we might be able to push things back a week or two, but I, you know, I, I don't see getting this done before early May um, at best. The other, the other piece too, and I know we've talked about this, but we haven't figured out how necessarily how to do it, is that we do wanna make sure that as we make recommendations, um, that we're making recommendations that are allowing these positions to be um, uh, that are, that are more inclusive um, than they were before. And I don't know, I don't know. We can add those, but what I guess I'm thinking about is: is there an algorithm or something that we would devise when we start talking about when we start making recommendations? Are those based on an algorithm that we put together, or? I think we need to, we're going to need to justify our recommendations in some way. So I don't know, you know, Sam, with the work that you've done in particular, or Felicia, with your HR work, 
how do you do that? Do you need to do that? Am I just worrying about something that doesn't need to be worried about? Or do we need to quantify what our recommendations are? I, I think there has to be some sort of justification for our reasoning. I mean, I don't, and I think we can pull that data from a few different points. So I think we can use the survey for some, for some aspects, you know, and say, certain percentage of employees or elected officials surveyed said this. So I think we can pull from that. Um, I also think we could probably pull from just, you know, like the other cities and towns that we're going to be looking at to see, okay, well, you know, like in the, um, in the ones that we were able to look at from the last meeting, where it showed the the average like cost of living and income and all of that from those other cities and towns. So I think that's another place that we're going to be able to compare from. I'm sure there's a lot of other places tear through in the chat that um, the cost of living. So I think I think there's definitely some we have to have some sort of substance for why we're recommending what we're recommending. But I think we can pull it from a lot of different spots that are reasonable. Okay. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that's going to be really important. People are going to want to know just not not just know where we're pulling the information, but how we're actually using the information. Okay. John, I just sent you a text message from um, Alan as well. Okay. Um, All right, so that's sound, so he's saying that it needs to be before seven one, but the, there's this question of ninety days before that. That was the question, right? Yeah, yeah I'll call. I'll call Alan. I, I have a feeling Alan's going to be the only. Everybody else is. I mean, not that the others aren't capable of finding out, but they're not going to know off the top of their head. <clears throat> well, and regardless, we have to factor in that ours. What we're doing is just a recommendation, so it's not like what we say will be enacted, like the city council is going to have to publicly deliberate on it. Right. Uh, I presume they want to have a forum. I don't know if that's required. I didn't see anything in the charter about that, but they're going to at least have to have two meetings because they usually have to take two votes. They could expedite it, but we shouldn't assume that they're going to suspend the rules to vote on our recommendations in one meeting. Mm, good so point. Alan just texted again and he said, sorry, he just researched it and he can't find the rule online and he'll respond to us tomorrow. Okay. And he said, if he's right in what he's thinking, it'll need to go to the council by early June. And then that would get two readings before the July 1st deadline is what he's saying. That's that backs up what Sam just talked about. Can yeah. you can you ask him is can you ask him is if they needed to send it to committee or go straight to second reading? So it sounds to me like what I'm going to do with the schedule is I'm going to go back and finesse it and um, look at trying to get it done by May first. Um, reason being that again I we don't I, we're just going to have to build in some kind of buffer. Um, I, I am a little concerned, is getting a little concerned about time on this, um, considering the fact that we've still got the survey, we've got to bring people in. Um, there's there's a bit of legwork that has to be done. Okay, so I'm going to redo the schedule and, and send that a, a schedule proposal and send that out to everybody as well. I'll get that out um, as well as uh, follow up with the city on the email lists um and a board meeting place okay what else um that pretty much covers everything that i have is there anything else that anybody else has just going back john, to i was not here in the last meeting john i was not here in the last meeting would you talk a little bit just for remedial information for me about What's the employee presentation, city employee presentation? Um, so the idea is that we'd be garnering information from employees, both past and uh, present, through the survey, but also um, having people come in, get invited in to talk to the committee. 
and making sure that you know if, if the public wants to ask questions about it, it allows us to ask questions up, any follow-up questions that might be needed, any detail. But the idea would be an opportunity to dig in a little deeper and to get information that might not come through the survey, at least to provide that as an opportunity. And that's gonna be only one day, one session? That would be right. So we have, we would have a, we would at that particular meeting, we would report out on the survey results. Um, but then the majority of that meeting would be open to discuss, um, to hear from the employees themselves about these issues. So what happens if, you know, people have a schedules and you may get one or two and you're missing all the rest? I, I don't, you mean in terms of whether we would have more than one opportunity for them to speak? I mean, you know, if, if, if the core of the work right now, if the core of the desk where it's the survey, maybe the other, any other meeting happening between now and the final part and the final date for the survey, it's having testimonies and opening the floor for where we're gonna come to meetings and, you know, and talk to us, right? Not just should have established one single, one, one date fits everyone. And if you cannot make it, they cannot make it, right? I mean, if, if, if I heard correctly, now the core of the work is just waiting for the results of the survey. In the meantime, you know, maybe, you know, open dates for the meetings that only are gonna be about testimonies and testimony gathering for those elected officials or formerly elected officials who wanna talk. Um, so if I'm understanding correctly, you'd wanna find some more opportunities for them to speak rather than just once. Is that correct? Uh, being a candidate, I think sitting one single date specifically, it's absurd. Okay. Um, how exactly do you feel about that? <laughs> um, All right. So well, I agree. Yeah, I think it's, it's one. It's 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 a definition of one size fits everyone. Yeah. So the only yeah the only thing we're trying to balance now is knowing that we're running low on time. How do we do that? So if we did open it up, and the and the other thing, Javier, too, is that. When I when I sent out the survey for uh, the people on the committee to find out when they're available, I was trying to work within the dates that are available. Um, it's possible. I I mean, I guess what would be alternatives? How would we open this up to provide more opportunities for other people to speak? Yes, Sam. I, I this doesn't exactly address what Javier is saying, and I I get that. I'm also trying to balance the time. But Felicia, can you correct me if I'm wrong, if there's language either in the email or the introduction that invites people to talk with a member? I don't think we put a specific date on there because we didn't want to commit to like, if 50 people were like, I want a one-on-one, -on -one, but we're putting that information out there that if people want to discuss either their responses or or the our charge in more depth that we will have um, members available to do so which I yeah. feel is especially relevant given that like, it's been really hard to schedule with this group. <laughs> um, and we're running yeah. out. So Javier, we talked about that. We went through that at the last meeting. We went through the language for the email that was gonna go out to uh, the, the different elected officials. And in that, we just said, um, please reach out to one of the below listed members if you would like to discuss your time as an elected position in more detail. And so then from there, we kind of put it on them to reach out to one of us if they want to discuss it. And of course, if somebody reaches out to you or any one of us, then we can kind of go from there in terms of scheduling something that fits both their schedule and our schedule. And then I was also saying um, in the beginning of the meeting, I'm going to put together uh, an email for all of us to have access to. So that way the responses from the survey will all go to that email. So then that way, if anybody responds to the email and says, oh yes, I would love to have the opportunity to speak with you in more detail, then any one of us can kind of decipher, okay, you know, I'm gonna talk to this person at this day and time and kind of go from there. Yeah, I, I, I hear that. I mean, that's sort of a standard when you're sending a server out with a community or an advisory board. 
my concern it's in relationship to the fact that it's an election year uh, an election year is going to be more difficult to articulate into promoting the city council into even the mayor to talk about a uh, salary raise for everybody right because it's an it's an election year so having in mind form the sort of the factor of the form i do think a lot of if if we are if we are talking about you know showing that this has been a sort of a thoughtful and you know conversation i think that makes a lot of sense that if we open the participation or in the meantime where the core of the work is just waiting for the survey for you know elected officials that are inter interested to go on record in during the meeting to talk about this right because you know we can come out with the greatest justification for them to do it, but um, you know it's going to be complicated for any by any councillor to do it because it's election year. And I think having sort of a voice in this right now, I think makes a lot of sense. Oh, and also because um, I see the usefulness of councillors and former elected people to come and talk publicly because I do feel that that may create a ripple effect for people who, you know, they don't run because they don't, they, the compensation is extremely bad, which it is. They are being underpaid grossly in the way how counselors are for the for amount of hours that they do is immensely. So I see, I see some value of those elected officials to voice that, you know, in open meeting. And that eventually, I would love that for that kind of testimony being public to move people to say, you know what, I'm gonna run. Money has been always a problem, but I see that when you're in the office, you can make changes and you can advocate to try to fix that for equity. I don't know, I see value on that. I, uh, I Javier, I, I agree with you. I We're just trying to balance this with the time. So do you have any, um, does anyone have any suggestions on how to get that? Would it be a matter of maybe having meetings outside of the normal schedule sam i wonder if like i know with that schedule you put out john thanks for putting that together there's like one meeting dedicated to it mm -hmm. i wonder if it's just we get our schedule our meeting schedule and mm -hmm. then using the same list that the survey goes to invite people to come to any of the upcoming meetings it's not like we've had a huge you know our agendas mm -hmm. Do you think it's possible to balance the agendas? Because if we're waiting for a survey detail and the other piece is just getting benchmarking, mm -hmm. perhaps we can just save space if elected officials can come at any of these meetings and have a final one. And then also in that same email that goes out to current and elected, current and former elected officials, again, emphasize that if these times don't work for folks, that they could do one on one meetings with board members. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I, I like that. Um, I like the idea. My, I guess my one question is, it's going to be a little harder um, to sometimes control the means. Are there other things that we need to get done that if we don't get done would jeopardize us hitting the deadline? Um, or maybe, again, maybe that's not an issue. Maybe, you know, it's not like we've had an outpouring of people attending these meetings um so it certainly would open up more opportunities um i don't javier you you've had more me experience with these meetings let's say we had a lot of people showing up and talking and knowing that we needed to also work through drafts of the report um how might that interfere if at all with getting the final report done so you and Waylon, because you are chair and co-chair, you two guys can start already drafting, having it start between you two drafting, having the first draft of the of the report, right? Because you are chair and co-chair, you can do it and bring it to the table so it can be sort of workshop by the group. Mm -hmm. um, we independently, the, the members that are not chair and co-chair, we cannot work collectively outside the meeting, but you can with your co-chair, right? Or vice mm -hmm. chair. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I think they are there are some things that we have already talked to about the lack of representation. You know, we know now that Jamila Gore 
is the first woman ever of color serving in city council. That mm -hmm. speaks a little bit about equity and diversity and accessibility. So those kind of portions of, of a report can be already being drafted. Mm -hmm. So I think that they are, they are, they are, they are, you know, things that we have told that can, can be drafted already. So if you mm -hmm. can go ahead and sort of get ahead of the game with that. And also when, so when the Northampton Police Review Commission, um, in the final two months of the Northampton Police Review Commission, we made, you know, we made 15 hours each week. So I'm not saying we should do that under no circumstances, but I, what I'm saying is that maybe having, you know, two meetings in one week to just workshop could be an option. Also, um, the, 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 the committee can vote to create a subcommittee. So just two people or three people that are gonna meet to workshop it uh, without the need to having a full quorum of this group, but a subset of quorum uh, as a subcommittee. That's also another. Okay, and, and those are all great suggestions. So if we set up a subcommittee, um, I assume that that can't, it would have to be below the quorum for this group, right? So it really wouldn't, it wouldn't be more than three people. So Peter, <laughs> Peter and I, by default, I think maybe I'm wrong. I've assumed that by nature of our positions, we would be working on that, but it would allow, <clears throat> excuse me, another person to get involved. It also sounds like it would not be a necessarily a threat to getting that work done to open up the other Mondays to have other people speak. Are, are both of those assumptions correct? I think so, yes. I mean, and, 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 and the subcommittee could be like two people. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So what we can do is, um, oh, oh, I'm, and there was another one you brought up. Um, you said meeting more than once, um, you know, maybe for the, like the last couple of weeks, is it possible for us to meet more than once? And so that would really be, you get towards the end of April and do we try to meet a couple of times um, to, to finish this thing up? Is that correct? Yep. Okay. All right. So let's let's take those one at a time. The first would be a subgroup to start putting this together. Um, again, my assumption has been that Peter and I would be doing that. Um, is there, Javier? What what would that look like? Do, does that need to be official, um, or does that come with the positions that we're in? Do we open it up to potentially a third person who might want to serve on this? I mean, I what I would say is that you and you and and Will and can start do uh, like drafting it, and after that, if you want to sort of another set of eyes, a uh, uh, sort of a uh, when you lay the foundation, another you know two people you can create a subcommittee of two people that are going over, right? But again, any <laughs> any kind of subcommittee that is not you and Wayland working on that. Needs uh -huh. to needs to meet in open meeting setting, right? Right. I see. So it almost be like a draft review committee. Yes. Yeah. Literally. Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Um, what do people think of having like if if Pete, I'm just thinking about by the time we draft it up, um, it I agree that other people should take a look at it before so that when we workshop it, we're far enough along. If we're not far enough along, the workshopping is going to really get bogged down. Um, what do people think about having a draft review committee, having two people outside of Peter and myself reviewing this? Well, John and I really can't comment, so it's up to the rest of you. <laughs> I think I like it's it. great. I'm being quiet because I, it all depends <laughs> on the schedule, right? Like on how we can get two or three of us outside of uh, John and Peter to find a time that works for us and meet. 
I officially want to go by the name of Whalen from this point. On. <laughs> you already do. <laughs> I also I I wonder too. We did this on Charter Review. I mean, we had a lot more time to do this, but I'm also curious we haven't necessarily come to a consensus on what we want to recommend. So maybe in that schedule, we need to build in a straw poll of like using the recommendations from the last one, you know, depending on how John and Peter, if that's the process we go where you two are drafting it, mm -hmm. if you're going to base it off of the last, um, like use the last rec uh, I can't think of words today, using the last report as a template, do we need to do a straw poll of like, what is the temperature of the committee on what people want to do? Because as far as I recall, we haven't we haven't had that discussion on what we want to recommend or even think about recommending, knowing that we still have the survey to go, but it seems tricky to start drafting a report when we don't have- What the outline should be. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm is, is, is there someone who'd be willing to take a look at the last presentation and just put together an outline? And by an outline, it's literally like, it would just be a few lines. We're not, yeah, there's not be any substance. Okay. The only piece I would make sure to add to that, Sam, based on the conversations we've had, is there is, um, there's a diversity and inclusion aspect to this, that it was not part of the 2014. So something like that needs to find a home. The other piece too, I just don't remember enough within 2014, what Felicia was just talking about is, do we have a justification section for how, you know, what's the algorithm? Those are the only two, two things I could think of. Is there anything else anybody else can think of that we need to make sure we include that might be new? Okay. All right, so Peter, you and I are gonna draft this, um, having a subcommittee. Um, I really think this would be somewhat light work. Um, I do like the idea of having that. Are, are there, could we have a, a motion to create a subcommittee? And then um, I guess we would need a motion for people to serve on that. I'll make a motion to create a subcommittee to review this. Okay. Second. Great, thank you. Uh, okay, Sam, do you want to lead us through roll call on that, please? Give me just a second. I was writing down what we were talking about. Okay. No, I'm pulling our names. Okay. John. Yes, I agree. Tara. Yes, I agree. Felicia. Yes. Um, are we allowed to have a vote on something that's not on the agenda? Is it new business? I don't know. That I was just asking. It is new. It is new it seems business. Like new business. <laughs> okay, then it'll fall under new business. Yeah. Thank with you. that being said, I'll vote yes. Okay. Javier. Yep. And Peter. Yes. AKA Whalen. <laughs> <laughs> all right you know, so when, that... when 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 people can say my name right javier i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna be thoughtful really okay gonna roll our r's javier okay um next we need two people to serve on that outside of peter and myself so do we have any cut two nominees uh tara you're nominating yourself all right, that's a big thumbs up. All right, do we have a second for Tara? I can, can I second Tara? All right, I'll throw it in. All right, what about a second person, please? I'll nominate myself. Someone want, and Tara's second. gonna second Sam, all right. And Waylon is gonna third. <laughs> okay, all right. Can we all have can we all have other names by the end of this, please? Oh, yeah, we can. We'll, I'll put that on the agenda for the next next meeting. <laughs> Nicknames all the way around. All right. Sam, I guess we got to vote again, please. On our slate. Okay. John? Uh, I, uh, I vote yes. 
on the two. Tara. I vote yes. Felicia. Yes. Sam votes yes. Javier. Yep. And Peter. Yes. All right. We have a subcommittee. Thank you very much, everybody. All right. So um, what I'm going to do is as I'm looking at a redraft of this schedule, I'm going to try to, we're going to look at getting this thing done earlier by a couple of weeks. Um, we're going to, I'm going to, we're going to add subcommittee time in for review. Subcommittee may meet um, more often at the end, but the subcommittee will decide what to do with that. Uh, and then we're also going to open it up uh, the meetings to having um, more options for people to come in and present. Okay, thank you very much. That was great. Uh, uh, some question, a clarifying question. Mm -hmm. um, Peter and John, when do you want me to have the uh, report outline ready? Could, is it possible for you to have it done this week? I can do that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. By Friday, by Saturday, Friday? Friday would be great. Okay, okay. Okay. Can I say Any, something? Uh, you bet. Um, Alan, to my in question um, that Javier was asking, um, about the um, needing it to go to committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, probably committee in the middle, it's up to them. I'm sorry. Yeah, probably, probably they are gonna send it to committee. So that's gonna, so that means that there's gonna be three readings and the, probably the second reading, they are gonna sort of uh, do it together. But as I said, this is gonna be, it's complicated because always when city councils are voting increase of uh, salary, optics are not good because people are not necessarily incredibly informed about the amount of work that their elected officials are putting. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why I feel strongly that having on record in this meeting, people talking, you know, it's necessary because in that way, you know, we are giving them sort of, sort of a, a, a support and this is why. I think that's, thank you very much for that uh, insight. I think that makes a lot of sense to give them opportunity. All right, um, any other new business? Sam, any clarification you need in terms of um, minutes? Sorry, I was just going through that really quickly. I think I'm, I think I have all the next steps here. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, thanks. All right, so uh, if there's no new business, um, I move to adjourn. So moved. All right, Waylon has moved it. Brewster has seconded it. So let me let me clarify something. That's not your last name, Peter. It is my last. <laughs> okay. So most people, so just, call, just, most just, people, call, just, most people to, call me my my first name. Just to clarify. I, well, I, am you, you offend, are my... I am not offended. I want to make that okay. no, just I just want to clarify. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> okay. In college, in college, my nickname was Wales, so we can go to that if we have to. <laughs> oh, I like that. There were five. There, there are six Peters in my fraternity, so we all had to have nicknames so we could tell each other apart. Yeah, Wales is a good name. It's not just a fluke. It's okay. better than Prince. Huh? I said it's better than Prince. It is. That's true. All right. So um, just being respectful of time, we got three minutes. Sam, you want to take us through? I will. Uh, John? Uh, I move to adjourn. Thank you. Felicia? Yes. Um, I don't, Jeff's not here. Uh, Sam, oh, sorry, Tara, I skipped you. I apologize, Tara. That's okay. Yes, I'll move to adjourn. Uh, Sam votes yes. Javier. Oh, yep. And Peter. Yes. All right.